Hi, welcome to the next instalment of my series on how to write your novel using that most unlikely of writing implements, a round Oxford bus ticket. In this video we are going to be considering what exactly is a scene and how can we write them in such a way as to make your novel a page-turner. We'll be taking bus number 13 up to St Aldate's. I want you to get off here outside what used to be the Swindlestock Tavern. This place was the location for a three-day pitched battle in the 14th century between the townspeople and students. The locals obviously really liked the students because as soon as the news of the battle spread, 2,000 men from the country turned up to join in and help give the students a kicking. Havoc! Havoc! Smite fast and give good knocks! they cried. Give good knocks. I like that. So much more elegant than kick their heads in. Now let's take a short walk back in time. Down the lane, everybody says, was the inspiration for C.S. Lewis's The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. Down the dark tunnel of the past, towards the world-famous Bodleian Library. We are on our way to see this chap, William Herbert, 3rd Earl of Pembroke. He it was who paid in 1623 for the printing of Shakespeare's first folio, arguably the one of the most influential books ever published. There are 235 still in existence, and Oxford University has four of them. The last one sold at Christie's for $10 million, so you probably won't be able to pick one up in the gift shop. Shakespeare famously said all the world's a stage, and I want to invoke this image to help us analyse a concept of the scene. The scene is the fundamental building block of your novel. But if you read some writing textbooks, you will discover that although everyone agrees about this, there is a fair bit of confusion about the precise definition. Well, I don't want us to get bogged down in definitions. It's a bit like the proverbial judge who said he couldn't define pornography, but he knew it when he saw it. I think it's the same with a scene. To understand the notion of a scene in your novel, think about a scene at the theatre. This is where the action takes place. When Julius Caesar is assassinated, it takes place live before your very eyes. You sit in the audience and watch. A similar thing takes place in a novel, except the scene is a metaphorical one inside your head. And you don't watch from the audience. You, the reader, find yourself standing on the stage next to Brutus. In the previous video, we examined what I called the clockwork of page turning that hypnotic compulsion that keeps the reader glued to the page. Here I want to look at how we achieve this hypnosis through the construction and arrangement of scenes. I said in the previous video that the magic spell consists of three ingredients, causality, curiosity and conflict. Here we are going to concentrate on causality. The sense of causality arises because each scene entails or causes the one that follows and is entailed by the one that went before. Scene A causes scene B, which causes scene C. It's like a series of toppling dominoes. If you remove a domino from the series, it stops toppling, and it's the same with the scenes in a novel. If one of them is random and not a response to what went before, the page-turning effect stalls. There are two types of scene, the first confusingly called the scene, and the second is the sequel. In the scene, the hero sets out to do something. Things go wrong, and generally... This, this scene ends in mini-disaster. In the sequel, he reflects upon this and decides upon his next course of action. So the sequel is obviously precipitated by the previous scene and precipitates the one that follows. Another way to look at it is to understand that a scene in this respect is a story in miniature. To see what I mean, consider this crude definition of a story. A hero sets out on a quest for something. The author puts numerous obstacles in his path and thwarts him at every turn. Eventually, at the end, he seizes a prize, or fails to. A scene embodies this pattern on a miniature scale. It too is a miniature story. In every scene, the hero wants to achieve some task, and usually runs into difficulties. Things don't well, end well, and this leaves us wondering, well, what's he going to do now? How is he going to get out of that? Of course, in a story, the quest is for something significant, like the Holy Grail, or, my favourite, rescuing a maiden imprisoned in a tower. In a scene, the quest can be small. If the knight, for example, wants to rescue a maiden, his first step might be to find out where the tower is. He might want to buy a map. So in the first scene, his quest is to ride into town where the mapmaker lives. 
Now how might that go wrong? Well imagine that along the way he meets a witch at a crossroads. He asks her which road leads to town and she agrees to answer him in return for a kiss. Well he's not, a, not the brightest of nights and clearly doesn't know the drill when it comes to meeting witches in a fairy tale wood. He refuses and so disaster strikes. She turns him into a monkey. The scene has ended badly. So now what is he going to do? In the sequel he reflects upon his fate. He knows that in the town there are sorcerers who can reverse the spells of witches, so he decides to throw himself upon the mercy of the next group of travellers heading that way. And this is what he does. And sure enough, before too long, a party of travellers arrive, and they take him along. They put him in a covered wagon and set off. But they seem strangely pleased to have found a monkey. So what can go wrong? Maybe he overhears a conversation among the travellers and discovers a terrible thing. These people are a troupe of actors who make the 14th century equivalent of pornographic plays, often involving animals. The last monkey died of shock, so they're very pleased to have a new one. They arrive at some dwelling and lock him in a room, and he reflects upon his plight. He decides upon the following plan. He can't speak as a monkey, but he can write, so finding pen and paper, he writes a note to the serving girl who brings him food. He tells her that he is a knight trapped in a monkey, and if she helps him escape, he will make her rich. Well, how could that go wrong? Well, maybe the serving girl betrays him, and the bad guys realise a monkey who can write would be an excellent crowd puller, so they put a, keep a 24-hour watch on him. Out of the frying pan, pan into the fire. But equally, I could have this scene end well. Maybe the girl helps him escape, and they run off and have lots of adventures together. I quite like this idea. There could be a sort of medieval Bonnie and Clyde. It's worth pointing out that sometimes a sequel can actually be skipped if it's obvious what is going on. Anyway, that's how it works. And once you have the readers in thrall, happily turning pages, your next task is to torment them, make the readers squirm. We will look at how to do that in the next video, how to make the reader cry and why you should. We will be taking bus number 3B to Folly Bridge and going off in search of the ghost of this little girl, Alice Pleasant Liddle, who lived long ago in Oxford and so beguiled the heart of a mathematician called Lewis Carroll that he immortalised her as Alice in Wonderland.